So I recently did a video, you know, Intel could lose the 3D stacking arms race, which was really all about why I'm still worried about Intel, even long term to a certain extent. Um, I've mentioned these types of things in a bunch of videos, though, recently, how I'm worried about Intel that I still don't think they've woken up enough yet. And that got me thinking, I should do a video about what would make me worry about NVIDIA and what would eventually make me worry about AMD. To be clear, I'm not worried about AMD at all right now. It's running like a well-oiled machine. Uh, AMD is in hyperdrive. They've got the money, finally, again. They have the talent, and they're not comfortable yet. And this third point is very important, that they're still paranoid about what Intel could be bringing out soon. That kind of worrying, refusing, you know, they can relax a little bit now from what I'm told for pe from people who work at AMD. Um, they can relax. You're allowed to take vacation days again. But no one's taking more than they need. And that's because they are just terrified of what Intel could do in a couple of years. That paranoia combined with having enough money is propelling them forward. And I think investors are going to get this by the end of next year. I think investors, analysts will finally wake up and go, you know, after, like I've always said, since the beginning of my channel this year, reality will catch up with Intel with Zen 3. That is when everyone realizes, oh, AMD is a market leader. Zen 3 is as big as Zen 2, and Zen 4 is probably going to be bigger. Oh, my God, it's not going to stop. AMD is a market leader now. And once AMD gets all that recognition late next year, I actually don't think that's going to be when I might worry either, you know. So when would I worry? When, what would I have to start seeing for me to make a video, I'm worrying about AMD? Well, it would be when AMD clearly thinks not just that they are a market leader. There's nothing wrong with being confident, right? No, it would be when AMD starts acting like they're always going to be a market leader. That type of mentality is truly what caused Intel to stagnate. It wasn't the core series beating, you know, Phenom, um, nor the i series eclipsing Phenom 2. It wasn't even really Sandy Bridge. It was Bulldozer and then Ivy Bridge. And Intel realizing, oh, wow, Bulldozers are their new architecture that was meant to catch up with us. Phenom 2 caught up with us. But this is worse than Phenom 2. And we just got a 30% IPC increase and then another 5 to 10%. Oh, my God. We're going to be in charge forever. Forever meaning 5 to 10 years because nothing's forever as we've learned recently. That type of mentality is when I would be worried about AMD. Something from Intel coming out that makes them think they can't be topped for a decade. And there are some people acting like AMD's already acting like this, but they're just not. I know Zen 2 is more expensive than they were initially going to price it at, but, you know, it's not bad. <laughs> the 8-core 4 gigahertz 1800X was $500 just a couple of years ago. And now AMD's giving you faster clocked 12 cores with 15 to 20% higher IPC, above 20% in some professional workloads. Um, and it's still just 500 bucks. AMD isn't even close to mad with power yet. And heck, if the 4900X comes out next year and it's just a 5 gigahertz 12 core at $500, they're still not milking, in my opinion. That still would be fine. You know, they're keeping the price points, and boom, it's even better at gaming and all, well, all tasks if it's at 5 gigahertz. You know, even if, and this is what I suspect they might do, by the way. They have this, you know, 4900X, and then they create a new name, like 4900WX for a Zen 3 version of a 12-core. And this one has, you know, SMT3, you know, three-way hyper-threading per core, and HBM on package. Even if they charge $600, $700 for that, they're like, you know, it's $500 for the 5 gigahertz 12-core. But if you want the 5.1 gigahertz three-way hyper-threading version with HBM. It's $1,000 because this is for specific tasks. They wouldn't be mad with power. They would have just added 50% more threads and a ton more IPC and performance for one model and charged a little more for it or something. Like, say it's $700 or 1000 even, you know. Well, it's double the performance, so we're charging twice as much, and gamers don't even need this. That still would be moving things forward, and prices on that would come down over time once Zen 3 hits you know, standard production for months, yeah, that wouldn't worry me. 
What would worry me is when AMD starts adding 5% performance per year while also ignoring segments. That is what Intel did. Uh, by the time Sandy Bridge E was coming out, it was like, who gives a shit? Sandy Bridge E isn't as good at a lot of things. You know, those two cores, extra cores, aren't worth having over, you know, I mean, getting a Ivy Bridge quad core with a substantially higher IPC and half of the power usage. I mean, they just ignored HDT eventually because they knew they could. They knew in high performance, AMD was a joke. So it's when AMD would start doing stuff like that, like ignoring Threadripper, which they're not ignoring Threadripper. They're taking their time. And be clear, they could have ignored Threadripper. 32 cores on 12 nanometer is still way better than any of Cascade Lake X or any of that crap. No, that's when you worry. When AMD just starts ignoring some of their most beloved series because they don't care anymore and starts creating 5% performance increases per year. But actually, for me... The biggest red flag would be how Lisa Sue talks. If she went from, in every interview, talking about, right now, if you see an interview with Lisa Sue, it's about heterogeneous computing, combining things together, new technologies. You know, she's always talking about what AMD's doing next. And there was a time when Intel was talking about what they got coming next. But now all Intel talks about is what they have now, and that's because they still got nothing coming. And that's when you worry. That's the biggest red flag. When in interviews, Lisa Sue talks about how great their current products are and isn't telling you what Zen 6 is. And she says, it will come with due time, but really look at how great we are now. You know, when she starts talking about the present instead of the future, that is truly when you start worrying about AMD. However, I don't think that's going to happen until after Zen 5. Because Let's think about it, people. Zen 2's out, and it's selling gangbusters, especially for AMD. Uh, Zen 3 will come out next year, probably not to all segments right away, but it'll start rolling out, and it'll really cement AMD as the market leader for performance and efficiency uh, for x86 uh, processors. And then Zen 4 should come out in 2021, maybe early 2022. And I think that's when they're finally going to go with true 3D stacked architectures or at least even more packages than we've ever seen before. You know, more like, you know, dozens of chiplets, perhaps, on some of their stuff. That's not going to be holding back anything. So if we're now what, in 2022, that's when Intel should hope hopefully <laughs> be on 7 nanometer with a brand new architecture. And around then, AMD will have Zen 5, and they will not be slowing down. They will want to have the as many punches over and over until they see what Intel's got coming. Which, yeah, again, what am I saying here at the end? AMD won't slow down anything until they see Intel's response. What you, when you will probably start to see AMD go into milking mode is actually in like 2023 if Intel pulls a bulldozer moment with their new architecture, and it's actually not that much better than their previous one. Although here's the thing. Even if it doesn't catch up to AMD, I don't see how they could have a bulldozer moment. Intel needs to fix their security mitigation problems. They need to start implementing at least some level of chiplets into the design of their architectures. But even if they just fixed all security flaws, got 7 nanometer working, and got a 30% IPC increase, that wouldn't be a bulldozer moment. It'd probably be like a Phenom 2 moment. And so, yeah, maybe AMD will get lazy. Maybe AMD will be worth worrying about. But I don't see that for another five years, because AMD is going to be paranoid until they see what Intel has. And that won't be for a few years, at least. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And if you've been watching multiple of my videos, please ring that bell button to make sure you get all the notifications right when new content comes out. And speaking of content, Patreon supporters get access to an exclusive podcast called Die Shrink. They get access to Broken Silicon ad-free a day early. And you get access to a Discord with a lot of interesting, like-minded people that work within the silicon industry. There's actually a tremendous amount of content I recently added to Patreon supporters. So please consider supporting me there to keep the lights on so I can pump out more quality content. And of course, if you can't, if you're a moocher, it's okay. I love the moochers. 
And that's why I still talk to you guys in the comments so much because I like talking to all of you. But if you are one, please consider sharing it. All right. Thank you.